Hi Gender Crew Chat, it's Callie here. Uh, it's Saturday and this week we're talking about gender queer and dating. So this will be a short video. No really um no it's not really as I've mentioned on videos before, it's not really dating a, a big part of my life. Sorry that seems a, it seems an odd word to use because it's not um uh in my vernacular, that's not what I would call it, but I'm not entirely sure what I would call it. I don't need a term for my vernacular, you know, it's like, um, the, uh, fallacious notion that the Hopi Indians don't have a word for time, uh, in my language concept, I don't have a word for it. Um, no, I don't have a word that I'm comfortable particularly using, but that's fine, because, as I say, um, not really um, a big part of my life. I did decide um, with a friend that if I ever did get involved with someone then um, I would call them and they would call me their slash my person friend um, which is a good which which I think is a is a good word for it. Um, uh, so yeah not not a part of my life not something I do not something I particularly want to do. Um, I do kind of fantasize about meeting a wonderful person who would kind of um, instantly understand all the gender queer stuff and all the kind of um, and instantly get my sense of humor and just there not be any work about it and who I would instantly be constantly comfortable with um, but I fantasize about that in the same way you know as I fantasize about um, about being able to fly or um, have a time machine. Um, and I think actually I put having a time machine like a rung above um, having a person friend um, on my wish list, you know. Um, so yeah, um, it's not really a big thing and part of my gender queer identity is being really comfortable with myself and my own company and um, my own kind of body and my own identity and that's what I've worked at um, and I haven't seen fit to work at being appealing to other people um, and this is the thing that even if I were interested I don't think that many of the people who I meet in my day to day um, would be particularly interested. That may change as I move to different places because I'm not going to be spending the rest of my life in a town of uh, like 20,000 people, it's more than 20,000 people, but or like, I don't know exactly how many people are in, live in this town because there's all these big suburbs of stuff that you never see, but anyway, it's a small university um, and uh, uh, it's a smallish town and it's a small university so you know there aren't that many people who um, I think would be interested or have the kind of equipment to date a gender group person um, equip mental furniture to date a gender group person and um, I don't go, they may, they may exist but I don't go seeking them out um, because I very much enjoy my own company I enjoy um, I have lots of, um, well not lots of, um, but you know, a sufficient number to my requirements of very nice um, friends, um, so I can always be spending time with people when I want to, but I do also like my own company, I like studying and reading and I like spending time shut off from the world, um, and that's really good. Um, the one downside of that is uh, something I've found recently is my university has a reputation apparently 50% of people who graduate from my university um, end up marrying someone maybe it's more than 50% of people maybe it's three quarters anyway some crazy huge percentage of people that go to my university it's definitely more than half um, end up marrying someone who also went to this university um, yeah I think it's 50% because they told us like when we came to the orientation and we all sat in the, in the hall and the, and the dean did a speech and she was like look to your right and look to your left and um, uh, chances are you could end up marrying someone who went to this 
It was also at the university, which depending on who you were sitting next to, it could be pretty awkward, I have to say. I certainly wouldn't have wanted to end up with my first year roommate, but that's another story. Um, so, yeah. Um, and people seem to start now that I'm, I've got, I've done three or uh, four years and my friends seem to start, started pairing off, um, which is a little concerning. Um, but, you know, and we've talked about um, uh, asexuality before and I'm not asexual. I do have those kinds of feelings, but I... I'm able to distinguish between um, nice to think about and something I actually want to be doing. Um, and I think it's totally possible to have that distinction. Um, because while I'm all for sex positivity and talking about sex openly, um, I think that sometimes in the discourse of kind of uh, sex positivity what gets lost is the notion that not everybody um, wants to be bonking all or even any of the time even those people who do actually have sex drives so there you go um, that kind of gets lost in the shuffle of trying to be as, as open about these things as possible um, not that I'm complaining, because I don't feel hard done by in that sense. Um, uh, and, you, and out of all, I have to say, out of all, because I follow like asexual blogs and uh, the, there's a collab channel on YouTube called Hot Pieces of Ace, which is um, very good and I recommend that you follow it. Um, uh, which... Um, which, which, you know, are, are sort of, the, the asexual community seems to me to be compared with other, like, you, you kind of get feuds and spats and other kind of, in a lot of other communities, kind of, especially ones that are centred on the internet, but the asexual community has always seemed to me to be a very kind of um, open and accepting one and, and very kind of interested in um, making it clear, in not kind of... Um, saying, well, you're not a member of our group and our group believes this, and if you don't believe this, then blah, blah, blah. Anyway, tangent. Um, to return to the point, not really my bag, not really something I'm particularly um, involved in, relationships and sex and that sort of thing. Um, quite happy to leave that to um, people who are more interested in it at this point. Um, Uh, yeah, was that everything? I was going to talk about my... I was briefly talking about my friends who were pairing off and, um... And I was going to have a little bit about how people kind of abandon or sideline their friendships in order to go off with the person that they, um, that they are paired off with. But I'm going to do that by not doing it because it would not be fair to do that and I don't think that it is because I've seen people, I've known people who are friends of mine even those who are in relationships when their friend when a friend suddenly becomes very involved with, with their in this particular case that I'm thinking of at the moment, boyfriend um, suddenly other friends will react negatively towards them and say why are my friends going off and spending all their time together when they should be spending time with me and I do feel a bit like that sometimes I do get envious in that sense um, but if people are really your friends then they want you to be happy and that's um, kind of uh, my kind of ultra um, I try as much as possible to abide by an ultra liberal live and let live type um, philosophy and to divest myself of as many of my prejudices because I know I do have them as it is possible to divest oneself of um, 
uh, so yes, um, uh, Spinster Pride, um, and yeah, see you next week. Happy dating. <laughs>